The alto scale is a very common sound in jazz, but it can be a little bit difficult to get it to sound good in your solos. So in this video, I'm going to cover what you should focus on, what you should practice if you want it to work in your playing. And I'm gonna cover some examples of how you can get it to sound really great with some really common arpeggios and structures, but also some that are a little bit less common or a little bit surprising. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. So first I'm going to look at what the altar scale is for a dominant chord. And then I'm going to talk about some of the problems that you have with that scale if you wanna use it. And also how you can actually solve those problems and work around them just thinking a little bit differently. And then I'm going to get into some of the beautiful lines that you can make using alter scale material. A G7 alter is a G7 dominant with a flat five, a flat 13, a flat nine and a sharp nine. So most of the time I don't really write out exactly which extensions I'm using. You will see that in the examples in this video as well, because it can have any sort of set of these extensions and alterations, and then you can just freely choose. It doesn't really matter. And I just write G7 alt. The scale that we have from G to G would be this scale. And in fact, this scale is the same set of notes as an A-flat melodic minor scale. So it's a mode of the melodic minor scale. And that's really useful because then you probably already practice it. You already know a little bit about what's going on and we can look at what diatonic arpeggios we have available. G half diminished, A-flat minor major, B-flat minor seven, B major seven sharp five, D-flat seven, E-flat seven, and then F half diminished, and G half diminished. There are two problems that you usually will run into with this. One thing is that we don't have a G7 arpeggio in the diatonic arpeggios, and that just makes it difficult to come up with some lines that sort of really fit with the chord and really get that sound across. If you just use the G half diminished, then that's really vague and that doesn't really work. The other problem is that when you're using the altered scale in a 251, it's actually an outside sound. So you're introducing a lot of really strange sounding notes because that's a little bit the point of the altered scale. But at the same time, it's also difficult to make melodies that really make sense and doesn't sound like you're just sort of skipping to another planet and then don't really know how to get back again. Probably the easiest way to deal with not having a G7 arpeggio is to relate the alto dominant to its tritone substitute. So if we do this in a very visual way, then uh, if you look at a G7 altered voicing like this one and then exchange the root for the tritone substitute, so for the D flat, then you're getting that D flat seven in there. The same goes if we just use this one, another G seven altered, then we get a D flat seven altered. You can do it up here as well. G altered, D flat seven. The reason why this is practical is because we may not have a G seven arpeggio, but we actually do have a D flat seven and an F half diminished arpeggio that we can use if we wanna make lines. The way to get all these strange notes to make sense if you're playing, for instance, a two, five, one in C major is to give the line that you make with the notes direction and that way get a smooth transition back to the C major seven. So that means that you're probably thinking about what note you wanna resolve to on the C major seven and then make a line that's just naturally gonna flow to that note. That sounds something like this. And if you don't have a resolution like that, then you get a completely different sounding line that's much more difficult to get to make sense. That sounds like this. So now we can use the D flat seven chord as a way of coming up with material that really works with the G seven altered. And that could sound something like this. So here thinking from a D flat seven, then I'm first just playing the D flat seven arpeggio and then an A flat minor triad, which is of course just the triad from the fifth of the D flat seven, and then resolving down to the fifth of C major. Another example using the arpeggio from the third of the D flat seven, which is the F half diminished arpeggio, would sound like this. Here I'm using a descending F half diminished arpeggio. And actually notice that the way that I'm transitioning into that arpeggio is by first playing an F major seven arpeggio on the D minor and then changing that, playing just kind of like a voice leading this entire arpeggio down to uh, an F half diminished on the G seven. And then just resolving to the third of C major seven. Now that you have the D flat seven as a way of getting into creating altered lines, then we can explore some other diatonic arpeggios that also really work well on the altered G seven. And then we can get into some structures that we need to construct and that are a little bit more exotic. P 
here I'm using the B major 7 sharp 5 arpeggio and that's really a great sound for a G7 altered. It's really giving us that sharp 9 and also the flat 13. And this line is actually made by using that arpeggio and then combining it with an A flat minor triad. And the A flat minor major arpeggio is also really useful on the G7 altered. That sounds like this. Here I'm using the A flat minor major arpeggio, so and then running up to the sharp nine and then resolving that down to the fifth of C major seven. And I'm still really taking care to have a target note on the C major seven so that the line that I'm creating on the alter dominant still resolves in a natural way. That's making it a lot easier to get the line to sound more natural. Now that we've explored some of the diatonic arpeggios, let's look at some of the other things that you can construct and also some of the seventh chords that are not really a part of the diatonic arpeggio set. Besides the basic diatonic arpeggios, we can also construct some really useful seventh chords within the scale. And this is one of them. This is an E flat seven sharp five. So E flat, G, B and D flat. And that gives us the flat 13, the root, the third and the flat five. And that's a great way to get some of the core altered sounds across. In melodic minor, then using triad pairs is a great way to create some strong melodies. And it's also, because we have the triads, a great way to get some really interesting upper structure sounds across. In this case, I'm using a B augmented and a D flat major triad pair. So I'm playing some inversions of it and I'm chaining them together, which gives me the ability to play a line that has a really large range, which is just sort of a bonus feature of this way of using them. The notes against the G7 would be the third, the flat 13 and the root, and then the flat five, the seventh and the flat nine. Exploring quartal arpeggios and quartal harmony is a great way to get some other sounds, something that doesn't sound like the standard arpeggios. And that's what I'm using here. So on the G7 altar, I'm first playing this, which you could look at as being a quartal arpeggio from B but of course it's also just the top part of a G7 sharp nine. And then I'm going down to this quarter arpeggio from B flat and then resolving to C major seven. Another very distinct sound that's well worth checking out is sus four triads. And that's something that I'm going to return to a little later in the video. They're actually related to the quartal harmony, but they are also sort of a separate thing in terms of how they work when you use them as a melody. Chord voicings are great if you want to have some arpeggios that have really large intervals and the range is really big. And of course, it's not the kind of thing you want to play all the time, but uh, it is a great way to just have some really dramatic lines that have a huge range, like I'm doing it here. So here I'm first playing a drop two voicing of a B major seven sharp five, and then on the higher octave, a B major seven flat five. And then I have this large range within the alter dominant from this low B up to this high E flat. And then I resolve that to the D on C major. Here I'm using two sus4 triads. And I think the sus4 triads are really great for just really bringing out some alterations in there. So I'm first using a B flat sus4. And that's giving me, of course, the seventh uh, F and then also the flat 13 and the sharp nine. So again, really sort of core sounds in terms of the alterations. And then I'm using an A flat sus4, which is the flat 13, the flat five, and then the flat nine. But it's of course not only about what notes I'm playing against the chord. It's also the fact that when you're playing a sus4 triad, it's a very distinct, very strong melody that you can use. So you kind of have the combination of the harmony, the alterations and the notes you want to have in there, and then also just really a good strong melody. The alter scale is of course a subset of the melodic minor scale and the melodic minor scale is in general a really important part of the jazz sound. It's something that you definitely want to explore in your playing. So if you want to get a little bit deeper into that then check out this video where I'm exploring a lot of things in terms of what you can use from the melodic minor scale and also where you can use it on different types of chords and different types of sounds. <laughs>